the Lord God Almighty. Make his path straight. God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Israel. Make straight his path in the wilderness. Your name is Jehovah. Your name is Jesus Christ. Your name is Holy Spirit. Let his light shine. Let his light shine in the darkness my love and greetings to each and every one of you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ my name is David Turner and I want to welcome you to this week's program the gospel is the power hallelujah this week, God has placed upon my heart to share the second part of the message we started last week. It is entitled, Communication Without the Intimate Relationship with the Heavenly Father is of No Use. If you missed that message, I encourage you, go to our website, go to YouTube at DTIM Video, and watch the first part and then come back and watch this with us. I believe you'll be really blessed with this message that God is speaking. It is directly from the heart of God. So many times we communicate with our Heavenly Father, but He doesn't want us to just communicate. He wants the intimate relationship with each one of us. Be blessed. Again, since He is our merciful Father, on whom will he have the mercy? Not only the humble, but God will also have the mercy upon the family. The Bible tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 16, it says God has the mercy upon his household. And we see in the book of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19, it says we are the household of God. That means he'll have the mercy upon our families. Amen? We see in the Holy Bible, book of Luke, chapter 15, verse 11 to 32, Jesus is speaking, he's sharing the parable, and he's saying this, there is a father who has two sons. The youngest of these sons, this two sons of his, he asks his father for his inheritance, now, the father didn't say to him, why do you need it? What are you going to do with it? He gives him everything that he has. And this boy, he leaves home, and he takes all the money, and he squanders it in prodigal and adulterous living. But then what happens? We see that there is a famine in the land. He loses all of his money, all of his friends are gone once the money is gone. He has to take a job feeding the pigs, which is the ultimate shame for a Jewish boy because the Jewish considered the pigs unclean. And not only did he have to feed these pigs, but he was so hungry that he longed to eat the pods that these very pigs were getting to eat. But then the Bible tells us in Luke chapter 15, verse 17 and 18, it says, this boy he came to his senses. Amen? You know, this boy was living with his father. He had the communication with his father, but he had no relationship. He was only living with him for the sake of the money, and the moment he got the money and he got the blessing, he was gone. But then the Bible says that he came to his senses, he thought to himself, my father's servants, they have it better than I do. I will go home to my father, and I will tell him, Father, I don't deserve to be considered your son, but would you count me 
as one of your servants, for I have sinned against you and against heaven. As this boy thought this, he decided to set off towards home. Now, when he was a long way away, he did not see the father, but the father saw him coming. And he ran to him. This is significant. Jesus is speaking of the love of Father God for you today. You see, in those days, the elder Jewish statesman, the father, would not run. It was a sign of his own uh, lack of respect. The elders who held the authority, they walked. They didn't run. But the father didn't care about his prestige or his status. He saw his son and he ran to him, laying down any sense of who he was for the love of his son. This is the heart of the Father God for you today. Hear what Jesus is saying, precious child of God. The Father ran to the Son. The Bible tells us again in James chapter 4, verse 8, when we draw near to God, he will draw near to us. This boy, oh, he was so broken and defeated by the devil. Do you feel broken and defeated by the devil in your life today? Your father, God Jehovah, he's so merciful. He is running to meet you today. Even you may be afar, you may not see him right now from the distance, but I tell you, he's running to you right now. This father, Jesus is telling, he ran and he hugged his son. He kissed him upon the neck. The Bible says, Psalm 2, verse 12, kiss the son and the anger of the father shall be turned from us. He kissed him on the neck. The kiss represents love. You see, when we have the anointing of God, the anointing comes through the love. And he kissed him on the neck. The neck is symbolic of the yoke that we carry. Why did he kiss him on the neck? Isaiah 10, 27, it says, the anointing breaks the yoke. The moment the father kissed the son on the neck, the yoke was broken off of his life. All the sin was gone. Everything was forgiven. The love covered everything and brought the anointing that broke the yoke. Amen? The Heavenly Father is the same as this Father for you today. Hallelujah. We must build up this intimate relationship. The Father, in this story that Jesus is telling, this parable, the Father sends his servant and tells him to put a robe upon his son. When we come back and we not only have the communication, but the intimate relationship with our heavenly father, he puts a garment of salvation and a robe of righteousness around you. Isaiah 61 verse 10 tells us. Not only did he say, get the robe, but he said, bring the ring. He put the ring on his finger. It was a signet. The signet represents authority. We are the signet in the hand of God. Haggai chapter 2, verse 23. God is giving us the authority. This father was giving back the authority to his son. We see Jesus Christ, Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20. God has given him all the authority of heaven and earth. And he says, that which the Father has given me, I give to you. Precious child of God, we wear the signet ring of Jesus Christ, of God, your merciful Father. And he has given us all the authority and all the power. The Bible says in Mark 16, verse 17 to 20, that when we believe Jesus Christ, we can go and we can lay the hand, go and heal the sick, cast out the demons, raise the dead. This is the kind of authority and power that Jesus Christ wants to give you today, child of God. We must build up that intimate relationship. The father, he had them bring the shoes. It represents the gospel of Jesus Christ, the shoe of the peace. Isaiah 52, verse 7. Romans chapter 10, verse 15. This boy, young man, he had no peace in his life until he came back and developed the intimate relationship with his father. The moment he did that, he had the peace in his life. Child of God, peace in your life is as close as developing the intimate relationship with your heavenly father. Amen? This father, he had another son. This son also had the communication, but he had no relationship with his heavenly father. 
He could not understand the heart of his father. When he heard the noise and the celebration, he could have gone to his father and asked, but he did not. Instead, he went to one of his father's servants and he said, what is all the commotion? Why the celebration? What's going on? You see, he could not understand the heart of his father. He could not understand his father's intentions. He could not understand his own inheritance with the father. And he couldn't understand his own relationship with his father. Precious child of God. So many of us are walking, even we believe Jesus, we go to church, we call ourselves Christians many times, but we are not understanding the heart of the Father. We're not understanding his intentions in and around our lives. We're not understanding the inheritance of who we are in Jesus Christ and who he is as our Father. And we are not understanding our relationship with him. We must come back to God and build this intimate relationship with our merciful Father. Amen. The father tried to reach out to this second son and say, son, he explained to him, all that I have, don't you know it's yours? It's yours. He tried to tell him, but this son was so busy being bitter and angry, murmuring, complaining, and grumbling against his father that he couldn't hear or understand. It's the same way many of us, we grumble, complain, murmur, we're frustrated. Many times people are angry with God because we're not understanding what he's trying to do for us and what he's trying to give us. I tell you, if that's your position, child of God, come back and develop the intimate relationship with your merciful father. Hallelujah. The father went on to explain to this son, it is right that I celebrate for my son was dead and now he, was, now he is alive. He was lost and now he's found. I tell you, child of God, he is your living heavenly father and the same way he will testify about you when you return back, he will say, my son, my daughter was lost, but now I find him righteous and virtuous in my sight. That is how God sees you when you come back to him. Hallelujah. Praise God. Precious child of God, we must come and run into the presence of God and build up this intimate relationship with our Heavenly Father. God Almighty, our merciful Father, he also shows the mercy upon his servants. The Bible tells us in Psalm 135, verse 14, and Psalm 35, verse 27, in both the places when you see. We look unto the servants of God. In the book of Luke, chapter 1, verses 5 to 20, and verses 56 to 58, we see two servants of God, Zechariah and Elizabeth. They obeyed God's commandments. They believed God. They believed his ordinances. They were the representation of the people who would go into the temple and they would make the sacrifice on behalf of all the people. They had the communication with God, but once again, they did not have the intimate relationship. We see what happened. One time when they were older, Zechariah went into the temple and he was making the sacrifice and the angel of the Lord appeared. And said to him, Zechariah, one year from this time, you will have a child. Now, Zechariah, because they were old, he couldn't believe that this was possible. He couldn't believe because he did not have the intimate relationship with his heavenly father. Instead, he only had the communication. Because of this, the angel said to him, because of the unbelief, you will be mute. For a season, when the child is born, you will be able to speak and you will name him John. When the time went by and it was time to have, sure enough, they were having a child. They had the child. The moment the child is born, Zachariah is able to speak. And he said, his name is John. The very name John means God is gracious. He is merciful and gracious unto each one of us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
The people all said when they saw this, they said, God has been merciful to you. Amen? God is merciful to his servants. Hallelujah. So precious people of God, it is not enough that we hear the word of God. We must believe what God says in his word when God speaks to us. We must believe it. The moment we believe, that is when we will obtain the mercy and the compassion of our merciful Father. Hallelujah. God is also, our merciful, as our merciful Father, he shows the mercy to those who are hungry and thirsty. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 6, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Many times, when Jesus was traveling, he was teaching, so many people would follow Jesus. And when they would be hungry, it would be late in the day, and he would have the mercy and compassion upon them. Book of Matthew chapter 15, verse 32. Many times we see even Jesus Christ, he was hungry himself, but he had the mercy and compassion on the people, and he wanted to do the will of the Father. We can see in all the places in Mark chapter 11, verse 12, in book of Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 and 2, book of Luke chapter 4, verse 1 and 2, book of John chapter 4, verse 34, in all the places you can look, it'll talk about how Jesus had the mercy and the compassion as they followed him. Now Jesus was speaking to his disciples one of these times, and all the people had been listening to the teachings of Jesus, and Jesus said to the disciples, we need to feed the people. The disciples came and said to Jesus, we would need 250 denarii just to buy the bread. How is this possible? You see... The disciples had the communication with Jesus. They were even serving Jesus, but they didn't have the intimate relationship with the Heavenly Father, so they couldn't understand what Jesus was talking about. But whereby we see there was a little boy. Book of Mark chapter 6, verse 41 and 42. His mother had given him five loaves and two fish. And he trusted Jesus, so he brought the fish and loaf and handed it to Jesus. Jesus took it. He broke it. He blessed it. He thanked God for it. He handed it to the disciples. The disciples fed 5,000 men with this five loaves and two fish that was given to Jesus by this little boy and men and women besides, the Bible tells us. Precious child of God, I tell you today, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He changeth not. The same thing he did in this situation by the faith and understanding and the intimate relationship of this little boy. He will do it for you when you develop the intimate relationship with him in your life. Hallelujah. The disciples, again, they had the communication they served Jesus, but they did not have the intimate relationship. But because this boy trusted Jesus, he had the intimate relationship. Because of this, not only did he eat, but God used him to bless the thousands so that they were able to eat. In the same way, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, in both the places it says that God will use you. He will bless you so that you can be a blessing to the many. Hallelujah. Finally, we also see that God, as our merciful Father, he shows the mercy to the sick. Amen? Those who are sick, those who are hurting, God Almighty, your heavenly Father, merciful Father, he wants to show you the mercy. We see in the Holy Bible, book of Luke chapter 17, verse 13 to 18, there are 10 lepers, and Jesus is traveling to Jerusalem. Jerusalem means peace, position of peace. God wants to take you as your father. He wants to bring you into a position of peace. These 10 lepers see Jesus. They're standing afar, but they cry out, Jesus, have the mercy upon us. Jesus says to them, 
Go and show yourselves to the priest. As they were going along the way, they were healed. Now one man, realizing that he was healed, he turned back and he came to Jesus. And Hebrews 2.17 and Hebrews 4.14, it says, He is our merciful high priest. He came and he fell at the feet of Jesus. Psalm 95, verse 6 and 7, it says, Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our God, our maker. This man realized who Jesus was. And he came and fell at his feet. And with a loud voice, he's crying and worshiping God and glorifying God Almighty. Jesus says to him, where are the other nine? Were they not also healed? They got their healing. But this man, he received the greatest reward. Not only did he receive his healing, but he got the intimate relationship with the Heavenly Father, the eternal blessing that will go on forever. Amen? I want to encourage you, precious child of God, build up the intimate relationship Communication with your father, Abba Father, who's called Daddy. Communicate with him and build up the intimate relationship. Spend the time with him. You will be blessed in such an incredible way. Not only will you receive all the blessing, but your whole generation and all those around you will be blessed. May God richly bless you as you walk in that intimate relationship with him. In the Bible, in the book of Matthew, chapter 9, verse 28 to 30, two blind men are crying out to Jesus. And Jesus says to them, do you believe that I am able? They said, we believe. And their eyes were open. Jesus said, according to your faith. I tell you, precious child of God, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, Hebrews 13 a. He's doing the same thing today. I want to show you a testimony. We were in Africa. I was praying a mass prayer after a message, and there was a woman who was standing in the crowd. I need not touch anyone. I was just praying the prayer. The power of Jesus Christ came down and was touching the people. They were being healed. And I want to show you there was a woman who was standing in the crowd and had the faith to be healed and the Holy Spirit touched her and her blind eye opened. Be encouraged today, child of God. I need not lay my hand. I need not touch you. The Holy Spirit through my life, when we pray, you believe and he can open even the eyes of the blind. Amen. Sure, sister. He said the eyes is blind before, but now when they got here, it's nice. Her eyes were blind. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. She was blind, and now she sees. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. How many fingers do I have? How many fingers? One. How many? Hallelujah. How long? How long have you been? For one year. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The blind see in the name of Jesus. This is the real Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Let's pray together right now, precious child of God. Lord Jesus Christ, O oh God, God Jehovah, merciful Father, God Jesus Christ, everlasting Father, 
God, Holy Spirit, Father of our spirits, we come before you, we cry out, we need you, we love you. Fill us, mind, body, soul, and spirit. We surrender, we humble ourselves before you. We say, have the mercy, O God, upon our lives, upon our family, upon our businesses, upon our ministry. Pour out your mercy, pour out a spirit of grace and a spirit of glory. O God, we want to know you better in this hour. It's not enough just to even and try to communicate with you. God, you said in your word how at the end time, so many will come before you and say, I prophesied in your name, I healed the sick, I cast out devils, and you'll say, I never knew you. We think so many times, how is that possible? But God, through this message you've revealed, we understand that even communication, even the miracles, without the intimate relationship with you is of no use. God, our heart's desire is the same as King David, who said, Oh God, as the deer pants for the water, my soul longs after you. Psalm 42, verse 5. Lord, for Psalm 42, verse 1. Lord Jesus Christ, King David says, Psalm 27, verse 4. One thing I ask, O Lord, that I dwell in your presence in the house of the Lord forever, that you take not your presence. Oh God. We seek your kingdom today. We seek your presence. We seek your righteousness. Right now, with the anointing of the Holy Spirit, fill every one of your children whose heart's desire is for you. You are El Roy, the God who sees. You can see right now every person who's been touched by this message, every person who is saying, oh God, I want to walk closer with you. I want your revelation. I want your vision. I want your understanding. Even as your word says in Amos chapter 5, it says that, Verses 22 to 25, that without your presence, our praises don't matter. We want our praises to matter as your presence fills us, your Holy Spirit. God, be with each one of these, your children, who is crying out to you today, Abba Father. Be with them, bless them, touch them. Let them walk from this day in a mighty new blessing because they are seeking, Lord Jesus Christ, not only the communication and the answers from you, but they're seeking an intimate relationship with you. Be with them, bless them, let them walk worthy of the calling you have upon their lives. Thank you that you are our merciful, loving Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray today. Amen. Thank you for watching, precious child of God. Join us next week on The Gospel is the Power. Make straight his path in the wilderness. Let his light shine. Let his light shine in the darkness. Let your Let your rain fall in this desert. For I hear the voice.